in the old guild system. You would begin as an apprentice, and they would work you for nothing until it was time for you to leave. You had to leave, become a journeyman. And uh, when you'd learned enough out there, you would go back to where you came from, and you would produce your masterpiece. I'm convinced that artists are there to supply artifacts, really, for uh, that illustrate people's taste. And people need to distinguish themselves from others. And so, inevitably, what you produce is, is not going to be working. Uh, uh, it may be even offensive to a uh, uh, considerable portion. But then other people will go, oh, this is just exactly what I like. And, and you, you are giving them a means of uh, distinguishing themselves from all those other, I mean, what is there, six billion people out there right now? They're all having one way or another to assert that they are themselves. And artists give them a, a means of display in order to do that easily. This is the oldest thing. This is my first hammer and chisel piece. You can see, January 1974. Once upon a time, a long time ago. 1975, up in marble. All with a two and a half pound hammer and a, a few chisels. This is, uh, I call it great 78. See, this is the, those old, those old uh, vinyl records there's a big old scratch on it this is an old blues boy playing his guitar baby please don't go this piece i used to call stone deaf i had a show in uh, los angeles and a couple came up to me and wanted to know how come it was called stone deaf because one of them was deaf and i immediately changed its name to earful it was smashed by a cat, and I put it back together, and then I deliberately smashed it when a gallery owner sold it for a joke of a price. So I gave her two chunks of the broken piece and told her that was what she had actually sold. A piece like this has got a little bit of paint there, which tends to upset some people, but again, I guess that's just something I like to do. Mescalito. His face is strange there because uh, in the Don Juan books it said that he had a flat, wrinkly, warty face. I carved it so that it looked like it had been pitched. And then on the other side, I faked it so I made marble look like ordinary river stone. And uh, it delights me. And this one is finally known by its friends is the Duck Lady, but uh, its name is, um, I can't even remember its real name. But it's, uh, she's in two positions. In the first position, she's holding her dress skirt back here. She takes half a step forward, swings her hand to her hip and faces forward in all of the movement. And that one little step is solid, that's why she's so strange. When a pond becomes queen, you 
you can see the uh, disappeared pond here, and, and you got to imagine that the weakest, most in insignificant piece of the entire game has made it all the way across. It is about to transform into the most powerful piece on the entire board. But I also like to call it um, dirty laundry as perceived by the clothespin. My friend came by one day and saw what I was doing and was horrified. Once again, I succeeded in grossing people out because, as he pointed out, this was uh, for a hospice where old people go to die. And uh, here I was offering them this old woman ripping her chest open. But my idea was, was to show the little girl, because when my mom was dying, at the very end, I could see all those years of her life being stripped away, and there was just this little girl left. I wanted to show that. Moving these things around is so nasty. That's been a problem in my life. They're such a delight to make. And then after you've made them, you've got to move them around and try to sell them. It's horrible. I've got, I want a commission to uh, do a large thing in uh, L.A. These are going to be three sheets of uh, limestone pierced again with, with uh, this time, uh, stained glass in it. And there were going to be three of them. This was the first idea, but then I curved it for this and see they would be in a circle around a fountain with the light shooting straight up from the fountain. And, uh, it would have been astonishing, but it probably would have broken me to have done it because I, I told them to do it for practically nothing. And uh, the, the whole thing fell through because it was a, a scam. These are old maquettes pieces. This one's in Denver. This one is that piece that you saw out there. I sold that. That's in Beverly Hills. I actually had sold for $3,000. That was my best sell. 300 million years from now, two dust motes meet and lie down for a short rest of a century. I see that you were marble too. Did the cutters ever give you a shape? Oh, oh yes, I was a tall and handsome boy with a stern eye. Cutters would come from all over the great rock and fall at my feet and weep. This is because they could see that I came from the purest heart of the mountain so terrible that it made the little cutter village below seem both tiny and great. And you? I was beautiful maid. I lost my arms early and cutters would dream of them and weep to know that they would never rock in the embrace of the sea of love where I was born. It's good to remember such things. I'd almost forgotten. And in the end, the two moats lay together so long that they set into a formation no cutters would ever name. Twelve years I'd sit running a planer running a big saw and thinking about this shop that was all just locked up. And I'm back and now I have to figure out how to stay. Now this is a fool's game, but I'm a fool, so it's okay. <laughs>